Uh, we've been around about over eight years now, um, and our other co-founder slash developer, uh, Brad West, he uh, couldn't make it to the conference, so you're stuck with this Brad. Um, but so before we talk about new ways to style your books with Vellum, can I just get, I want to get an idea of like how many people are like current Vellum users? <laughs> Every, oh my, how many people are new to Vellum entirely? All right, great. So um, I will probably lean heavily on some of the new stuff, uh, but during the demo portion, I will try to cover some basics, but I might go a little bit fast through them, but I still think it's, it's important. So um, uh, if you have questions, uh, I will have a Q&A at the end, um, but if like I'm going too fast or if there's something urgent, feel free to just yell. I think it's a small enough thing that I can stop and do that. So uh, let's talk about uh, what I'll be talking about. So like I said, we're gonna talk about what's new um, uh, in Vellum. I'm gonna give a demo of what's new. And then uh, because of some of that, there's some uploading tips that uh, I think we'll go, we'll go over. Um, and then at the end, I am going to leave plenty of time for q and A. If you've got questions, I've got the answers. Um, so, uh, we teased this image on social media, so maybe a lot of you guys are Vellum users, maybe you've seen it. Um, this sort of just give a little hint about some of the stuff that we were working on for, um, for the next release of Vellum. And the first thing, is styles. And so if you're a Vellum user, uh, you know that we have had for a while now eight sort of book styles that um, you can get in there and configure. Um, you can change their, the heading style. You can change what, what kind of drop cap you use, what kind of ornamental breaks you use. Um, but we really wanted to expand that. So in a uh, forthcoming version, um, what we've done is gone through and really worked hard to create just a set of beautiful, um, beautiful new styles. Again, each one can be configured, and they're, you know, we don't sort of, you can tell that, that they're appropriate. You know, some are maybe more targeted at some genres than others, but they're really, they're really versatile, and they look fantastic in both ebook and print. Um, and we had so much fun creating these new eight, we just decided to create even more. <laughs> so we have uh, just a ton of beautiful new styles. And again, like, you know, like all of the existing styles in Vellum, you can get in there and configure them, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but with all of these new styles, <coughs> We needed a new way to uh, to browse them because uh, we used to use, and it's kind of fun to go through the book styles and see how your book updates, you know, super quick. But when you've got about eight, that's reasonable. When you have this many, it's not reasonable. It just you just get sore, you know. It's, um, so we came up with a styles browser, and and you can see on the left hand side there we have some categories. So if you are looking for a script style, or if you're looking for a sans serif style, we've got some categories. We've got the list of the most popular styles, et cetera. Of course, you can click on all styles and just find them all. Um, and then we've got a, um, in the middle, it shows you all of the styles for the category you've selected. And you can see that the cards on the, in the middle there are sort of our ebook specific. And for the selected one, we show you what it will look like in print as well. Again, there's a little teaser there for something I'm going to talk about shortly. Um, as I mentioned, though, uh, you can still configure um, your styles. So you can get in there, and you're not just stuck using one of those. You can get in there and really change your heading style, change your first paragraph, ornamental break, et cetera. And this should be relatively familiar to, um, to everyone uh, who's used Vellum before. However, there is a new thing there in the left hand um, heading background images. And this is something that um, we've been seeing a lot. And we wanted to make it really, really easy um, and just really easy to create a beautiful new book that will just wow your readers. 
Um, so uh, to that end, we have we ship with six built-in heading styles. I'll probably I'll go through them in the demo. Um, this is one of them, is designed by um, the illustrated author, um, and it's just this beautiful peonies. Uh, and then there's uh, we have darker ones as well, where the text inverts. Um, this is a little more futuristic, and just like you can with ornamental breaks, you can add your own images. You can, of course, add your own heading background images as well. This is one that I um, pulled down off, uh, you know, just a, a free image that we downloaded that we that we think is kind of fun. Um, and so now we've got more styles. We've got more ways to. Well, I suddenly got loud. Um, more ways to configure those styles. Uh, we we realize that you know if you're writing a lot of series, it's it's hard to maybe remember what set of style options you chose for series one versus series two. And so we're introducing something called save styles. What it does is it allows you to say, hey, take all of my settings, freeze them, and um, and put them in a library of save styles. So the next time I import a book. I can just go to the save styles, and you'll see it's a new category right there. Um, and you can choose which one you want to apply. Um, those are the major new features in Vellum 3.0. Uh, and so I think it's, you know, I wanted to take a, a little time to go step by step and, sh and, and show you them in slide form. But I think it really sings when you see the demo. So. We're going to do that now, assuming I can do this. How's that? You can see my screen? Awesome. So um, this is a, this is, uh, actually, I didn't ask this. How many of you, are any of you in the, in the Vellum beta? OK, a few of you. So this is the Vellum beta, and we've been working on it for a couple months. Um, uh, and so I'll be giving the demo using using the, this, which we're intending on releasing uh, shortly. So, of course, so now here's for the for the new Vellum users. I'm going to give a little bit of the overview. Um, in Vellum, you can um, I used a hotkey there, so I should probably show you. So you can do File New if you just want to start from scratch. We know we have. A, uh, Plenty of authors who are like, "Ooh, I really love how clean and simple the interface is." If you want to start writing a, a book, you can. You, whoa, that's not how you do that. Um, you can start writing your book, uh, just like. Um, and if you really want to focus on writing, you can close the preview and really focus on on authoring your novel. Um, uh, and for the. Ex the existing Vellum user, you may have already noticed some that Vellum has sort of has a clean new look. It really um, feels at home in some of the more modern Mac OS versions. Um, probably the most significant change here is um, is this contents styles button. Um, we've moved up here to the toolbar, and now to switch between them, which I'll show you shortly, you use this show contents button, show styles button. The navigator has been redesigned to make it really, really easy to read. Um, you can even um, change the font size there. So for those of us, I just got progressive lenses. Um, <laughs> for, the, for those of us who need a little help with that, that's super useful. Um, and yeah, so it's been uh, sort of redesigned, cleaned up. Um, but it's easier to see, I think, when you've got a full manuscript loaded in here. So I'm going to close this file. Um, and you can import fr from any Word document. And Scrivener also has a Vellum export that works great. Um, but any, you know, while you can write in Vellum, uh, we also don't want to sort of presuppose that you have to write in Vellum. And so we know that people have very particular needs and very particular desires about where they write. Um, and so we just, as long as you can get into a Word manuscript, a docx, uh, which you can do from Word, Scrivener, Pages, et cetera, um, you can drag it in. So I have this strange man, uh, the invisible man, sorry, 
loaded into Word, and it, there's not a lot of formatting going on. And I'm just going to drag the invisible man right into Vellum. And here you can see it immediately opened up the Word file and parsed, um, parsed out the chapter titles. And you can see that I've got, uh, I can go through and it's already applied um, the Meridian style, which is our default style. To most of you, you're like, yes, get to the good stuff. But <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and uh, uh, so again, I can go here and I can, I can make, I can fix typos. This is a still a full-fledged text editor. Let's really quickly do a find and replace. Maybe I don't. Maybe this shouldn't take place in in Bramblehurst. Maybe this should take place in Las Vegas. Um, and then just like that, I've replaced all instances of Bramblehurst in my entire manuscript. Um, and now that it's, um, now that, what I really like about this is so much faster than Word. It's, there's, there's some really nice things about ha also having this, you know, um, this is all just local on my machine. I don't have to wait for anything to happen. Um, so now my manuscript is perfect. It takes place in Las Vegas, not in Bramblehurst. Um, and I want to really make my book look the way I want it. And so this is now when we're going to go to the styles. Um, and here you can see I've got some popular ones. Uh, you'll recognize some old favorites like Meridian. Here's a new one, Edgewood, that uh, our beta users are loving. Um, Kindred, I think a lot of people are familiar with. Metro is a, uh, is a fun, modern style. Um, and again, we can just go, here's all, the, here's all the serif ones, here's all the sans serif ones. If I go to all styles, I'll be scrolling for a while, so let's go. It's a lot. Um, who Stardust is, I don't know, there's just, <laughs> every time I go through it, I, it really, um, it's just really a lot of fun to just keep playing with all of these. So, um, yeah, some beautiful, beautiful styles. Let's go back, though. I'm just going to keep, sh show you as many as I can on my way back to. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 what we've done is, is when you select a style, and this is true in older versions as well. When you select a book style, it it has opinions. We have, as designers, we have opinions, although you can change them. Um, we have opinions about what the default should be. So it changes the heading. It changes the and it changes the body font. And, and that's because we think that like, not all body fonts actually go well with all heading styles. So you're right, you're, you're absolutely right. You're noticing that the, the body font is um, changing as well. Um, that will be more noticeable in print, for instance, where you can see this change as we go. It might be a, oh wow, I don't know how you're seeing. Yeah, well, I apologize that it's really hard to make out, but, but you're right, that is changing. Um, so let's go to Edgewood, and, um, and now I like this a lot, but I want to configure it. I need to, I want to look at some other options. So we've got this button here, the configure style button, and this is going to take us into this mode, which I think should be familiar to most Vellum users. Um, we have a little filter down here that's new, uh, allows you to choose between all features that are available. Vellum has block quotations, verse, different kinds of uh, images that you can add and style separately. Um, uh, but one, one thing that's kind of nice is to be able to limit to, to just the set of text features that are in your book. So I'm here, and I want to go through these heading styles. Um, and you can see here we've got um, three different heading styles for Edgewood. This is, um, this is also a kind of a fun one with a big bold one, so maybe I'll keep that. Um, you can also change first paragraph as usual. Um, that hasn't changed, but we have even more drop caps. So this is, is um, I can't go through and show you all of them. We'd be here all day. Um, but this is Sinzel, um, is the font, and it's just a beautiful font. It's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, you can see as we go through that, um, I hope you can see. Yeah, it's just got 
got a lot of character, and we had a lot of fun with it. Um, so, uh, but going back to heading, uh, one of the things that's, that, that we do as well is that these heading styles, um, and I think this might be something that even if you're an uh, existing Vellum user, this, this may or may not be new, but they, they sort of, they react to the content of your book. So um, this, this book has a lot of chapter titles um, and that, and so, you know, we've designed this book to have a big bold number, or this heading style to have a big bold number and then list that, the chapter title. Um, but if, if I have another book that is um, this book, I've made The Emptiness of Dorian Gray. Uh, it doesn't have any chapter titles. And so you can see here that the, the heading styles all in Edgewood have a different look entirely. And so you can come in here and you can look at Edgewood, configure the heading styles, and you can see that we've designed different kinds of styles for, um, for this case as well. And so what's fun here is like we've done, as you can tell, we've done different fonts for the chapter and the 13. And if you go through all of our styles again, you can see that like, for instance, Hawthorne has like a really fun uh, big bold number and you can come in here and see all of these styles. We've got right aligned ones. We've got things that are written out. And so we've made sure to include ones that we think are gonna make your books look the best. We didn't include all options because as we went through, we're like, this, this, doesn't, this isn't good. This isn't good book design. Um, so we were really, really careful with what we allow um, because we want it to look great um, while allowing you guys to customize the things that ought to be customized. I saw a question. So, uh, some, some styles enforce in all caps and some styles do not. So you can, you can so it, um, in the original eight styles that Vellum had, we only had a couple styles that allowed you to do mixed case. Now we have a lot more. So yeah, you should be able to. Um, so, okay, so that's, I'm gonna go back though to my uh, Invisible Man example and I'm going to go here, and now's a good time to show, show you. It's nice to go to configure style, it's, it's sort of familiar, but once you're sort of um, past that, it's really, we're finding it really handy to be able to go and immediately just dig in here and immediately go to the styles that you want. So I am going to show you to add a custom ornamental break. And so, again, um, You've been able to add your own images to um, as custom ornamental breaks for a while now. Um, I'm going to come in here and add a ornamental break, and for this book, I'm going to add a short sword. And you can see this short sword here. You can't even tell that it's a, a short sword. Um, so one of the things that we're going to do is that's new in in Vellum. 3.0 is we have a size slider right up here. And so you can, and you can change it so that it's a lot more visible and make it a lot bigger, which has been a, a requested feature from a lot of people. You might, you might wonder, like, why is it a big deal that like, I'm talking about a size slider um, on an image? It's like not hard. Um, <laughs> it's, well, I'm glad you think it's a big deal. I think one thing that I think is, uh, is worth talking about is like, um, one of the things that we think about is like we want your books always to look, you know, as professional as possible. And one thing that makes a very professional looking book is in print is having your lines match across uh, the page. You want balanced spreads. Um, you want to avoid widows, things like that. Um, and so if we allowed arbitrary size of your, of your, um, of your, ornamental breaks, then the lines below it might not match with the facing page. And so, um, so this is why we've given these discrete sizes to make sure that everything lines up across the page. We handle it all for you. You do not have to worry about that. And you never have. That's, that's something that, that has existed ever since we did print.
We don't have a slider for that yet. Yeah. So ornamental breaks, that looks a little big to me on my computer. Kind of looks OK up there. But I'm going to shrink it. So I'm going to do that. Um, and now uh, I'm going to go to heading background. Um, and heading background has a carousel, which, again, should be fairly familiar to people. Um, and these are the ones that we've, um, that we've, that we've shipped with vellum that you can use that we think are fun but also, um, but also versatile at the same time. Um, so we've got this like very nice gradient that just sort of makes, just makes that first page pop. Um, we've got this filigree thing. Um, uh, here we've gone from a single page full bleed background to a, to a full spread. You can see um, in the preview, of course, you can go back and check out the left side of the spread and the right side of the spread. Um, you've got a foggy, mysterious one. You've seen this, this one, this more futuristic one. I really like this one, um, the, the sort of the moon and the trees. And of course, if you want to make a big, bold statement, you can, you can um, use all black. That's just, we've heard from a lot of people that it, I just want to get going. I just want to like choose one and go. But if you want to customize, just like we did with the ornamental break, you can come in here. And, um, and in this example, uh, well, sorry, here, I'm going to highlight that what you want to do is just look to see what size <coughs> of heading background. And if you're creating it or if you have your designer creating it, you can just tell them the size, and it will be guaranteed to be perfect. So here, for image span, if I want a single page full bleed, I need this size. If I want to spread, I need this size. I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a tree. Let's, let's see heading backgrounds. I downloaded this one, the trees. Well, that, doesn't, that doesn't work so well. I can't, I can't read my book. Um, so I just can click on use white text. And then there we go. Obviously, it only uses white text on that page, <laughs> not on your other pages. Um, And let's take a look. So yeah, it carries through every chapter automatically. Does it print and it can't, no, so it's print only. Okay. Sorry, I, um, I neglected to mention that. Heading backgrounds are a print only feature. And that's because ebooks can't do this. Um, and so it's one of the things where we think that we sort of held off for a long time because we thought it was important for, for people to have like ebooks and print books that matched as much as possible. But we kept, uh, you know, the more we thought about it and we kept hearing from people and talking to other authors, um, creating a hardback version that has heading backgrounds is a really nice sort of like extra ad or something that is just for the rabid fans or things like that. Um, so we decided that, yeah, it's, it's a print only thing. Um, that is worth that is worth doing, and it won't appear in the eBooks, so you don't have to worry about eBook file size or anything like that. Uh, it will if you're using it, you know it's an image, so it will increase the file size, but it's 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 small enough to go to any to be uploaded to Amazon KDP or yeah or or Ingram Spark. It's not going to it's not going to like completely you know, blow away your file size or anything like that. Uh, you can make it be in color, yes. So that's the same way that it's always been in print settings. You go to color, and then you can use color. That, that will increase your, your cost, <laughs> but yes? Uh, can you make that uh, image only appear in background? You can't yet. Okay. That's, so we started out, um, uh, we started out uh, by doing it like this, by making it consistent across the book. That's by most people we talked to wanted it like that. And there's a lot of advantages to that. If you, this is say, um, when I get to save styles, we'll talk about how these are all in your save style. So as soon as you apply to a new series, you have it. You don't even have to worry about finding the images again or applying them. Um, but we have some stuff planned that we, that we um, purpose, not really purposely, but we were like, oh, is this going to make it into 3.0 or not, that, that we're going to schedule for 3.1 that, that I think a lot of people will be excited about. Yeah.
uh, we are talking, yes, so, so one of the future things that's coming is, um, is a way to, to indicate other images for other chapters. Um, so this is, as I showed, this is on all the chapters automatically. There's also this image presence. Maybe this is a little bit too contrasty. I can just come here and I can make it be a little bit gray. This isn't really selling it to me, though. Um, this, this book, though, is about a strange man arriving on a winter's day. So I'm going to go to winter instead. I'm going to change it back to using black text. And I think this, this is more what I want. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, I think that's better. And, and again, just that fast, it applied to every chapter. Um, yes. Correct. All of this, anything in this custom heading background is print only. Speaking of print only, another, as long as we were doing print only things, um, I wasn't going to talk too much about this, but I really like it. Um, so we're talking about it. Uh, is if you look at these drop caps, um, this Sinzel style is really, let me go to chapter one. This Sinzel style is, is really angular. A lot of the letters are really sort of like overly stylized. And that's one of the reasons why we love this. Um, but what it meant is that sometimes you'd have like the, the rest of the word be a little bit far away from the, um, from the A. People are used to that with drop cap, but what we did is we went in and contoured some of these very angular letters. So if you look here, and it's something that like you almost don't even know is happening, but you just kind of feel it as like, wow, that's that's really nice. So this A, for instance, we've got the text sloping with the letter um, A, and you know some letters obviously don't need this, but even something like the Y, um, and hopefully you can see that it just follows the curve of the Y. And um, so this is, again, this is a print-only thing. Ebooks can't do this, but is a really fun feature where all of our letters have drop cap contours in some of these new styles. One of my frustrations has been the, uh, the text So um, let's come back to that in the Q&A, since that's more about font size. Yeah? But general font size, not drop caps or anything like that. OK, yeah. Um, so uh, now that I've done that, I can come back to Edgewood. And you can see the full spread right here uh, as it would look in print. You can see, again, as it would look in ebook. Um, and now, because I know that I'm going to write a sequel to this book, I'm going to save a style. So I'm going to call this, I don't even know, the Invisible Series. Yeah. Uh, that depends. So it, if you do a spread, uh, it will automatically start on the right side. And this also pays attention to your print settings. So if you have the first chapter starts on, on the right, but the rest of your chapters fall where they where they may, then it will just cut it in half, and you don't even have to think about it. Um, so as not to increase the the pay, you know the, the length of your book. If you're like no, right side you know start on the right side for every chapter, then it may have to add a blank page in order to like fit that that in there. So now. No, that, it's an option. It's an option. The default in vellum is to only have the first start on the right and the rest. But some people, if they're making a, a hardcover as a special thing, they, um, they like that option. So we made it as an option. Um, so now I've created a saved style. And you can see I had a new category um, over here called saved styles. And this is where all of your saved styles would be. Um, so if I hit. I don't even need to save. I'll just go to Finder. Um, I have an, a book called The Invisible Child, and that's my sequel to The Invisible Man. And if I open this guy, you can see that it's Meridian, um, and say that like, okay, great, like I'm all set now. I've brought it. I've brought my sequel into Vellum. I'm going to go to my saved styles. Here's my saved styles. I can immediately apply it, and boom, you can see 
that the heading background went seamlessly. I didn't even have to think about all the images um, went with it as well, even the custom ornamental break. So if you have multiple series, create these save styles, will save you a lot of time. Um, so I will. The old styles that I've seen you make are still there. All the old styles are still there. Nothing has been removed. Yeah, yeah this is all just new. Um, <laughs> so another thing that's fun about save, or that's interesting about save styles is I told you that these are frozen, and that's to prevent you from accidentally you know, if you use this saved style in multiple books um, from updating and then like accidentally affecting another book that's in a different series or something like that. And so if you do want to, however, um, modify a style or change some of these things, say you've got a new series that kind of looks similar, you can, you can use this, um, this menu here in your saved styles and um, you can either select the original style if you forgot, um, uh, which style uh, you built this off of, and you can also do apply to original style. Um, another thing about these saved styles is that they are actually um, saved, this, the current saved style is saved with your vellum file, so if you're working with an assistant or you're collaborating with another author and you send your vellum file, we know that a lot of our users are you know, sending vellum files to other people, um, vellum will, thank you, Vellum will say, hey, this uses a saved style that isn't in your library. Do you want to add it? And you'll immediately add it to your library so you can use that style. So that is saved styles. Um, now, it, I'm pretty happy with how this looks. I'm going to hit generate. First, I'm going to save because I like, I feel like that's pretty good hygiene to save. I'll save my file. I'm going to hit generate. Um, and then for, uh, I think most of the Vellum users know this, but I think it bears repeating. Um, Vellum allows you to generate per platform. And we've lately been getting a couple of questions about like, oh, why, why do you generate per platform? Um, and there's two main reasons. Um, the, you know, the e it, it's an EPUB file, except that like all of these e-readers read that e EPUB file and, and render the pages differently. There's all these quirks on all these devices. And so we've been around eight plus years and we've learned about how, you know, an Android Google Play renders versus what Kindle, what Amazon does when, when it converts that EPUB to its enhanced typesetting versus what Apple Books does. And we want your books to look the same and to look beautiful across all those platforms. And so that's what we do. We create specifically tailored files for each platform. We also create Mobi files for Kindle, um, which even though you don't need to upload, you can't upload a Mobi file anymore, for our readers, that's like absolutely crucial if you want them to read on a, on a Kindle device. And then lastly, <coughs> excuse me, lastly, um, with store links, we, um, we, you know, any sort of barrier between uh, some sort of stop for your reader to like on the way to buying your book is like potential for them to just like put the device down. And so this way it can link you directly to the store for, the, for where they purchased from. So it will take, you to take the reader directly to the Amazon store or the Apple book store or what have you. Um, so I'm gonna hit continue and I have all this new stuff. I have, um, I have you know, heading backgrounds, et cetera. I'm just gonna generate and you can see that we've already generated the EPUB and the MOBI. Um, we generated all the other formats, and now we're going through and generating the PDF. We're doing all the automatic lay all the automatic layout. Where is the EPUB and the MOBI? Where is it? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so when it's done, <laughs> when it's done, it says show files. Now it's generating. I skipped this step because I had Vellum set up, but, but Vellum asks you where do you want to save your files. I skipped that step. Um, but whenever you're done generating, you hit show files, and it will take you exactly to where it generated them. And as you see here, I can click through. Here's the EPUB for Apple Books. Here's the EPUB for Google Play. Here's the EPUB and the Mobi file for Kindle. And so if I'm going wide, I just upload each of those things to where I want them to go. Um, 
Here's the print, for instance. And if we look at the print, I don't even know if you can see this. Um, yeah, you can't. Let me zoom out for you. But you can see a beautiful spread. And the question was asked earlier, like, oh, what happens when it, you know, when it, um, if you have it, you know, does it always do the spread? And no, it automatically chopped it in half so that you don't have, <coughs> that you, you don't in increase the page count of your existing books. So um, that, that's it. That's the workflow from beginning to end, new styles. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the talk. Can you see demo? Yes. All right. So um, one thing I said that we'd get to um, was, uh, was tips for uploading. And so I ma made a lot of mention of bleed. And uh, if hopefully this is like, hopefully you guys know what bleed is. But a lot of these heading background images, they go, the images go to the edges of the page. And when that happens, that's called bleed. And I've highlighted the bleed region in pink here in this image. So it's important, like how this used to happen on, on, on old, you know, old school printers, is that it would print the image at a, you know, at a larger size than the trim size. So if you picked a six by nine inch trim size, your PDF would actually be slightly larger than six by nine, and the images would go to the edge. And then the trimmer would cut at six by nine, thus ensuring that you don't have any unsightly white lines on the edges. And so when you upload to KDP, if you've chosen one of these heading background images that bleed or you've customized your, um, your heading background image to use for bleed, when you upload to KDP, you definitely want to make sure to choose bleed. Um, we, we've had full bleed images in Vellum before, full, p full page image elements. Um, but this was a thing that I think bit a lot of users who were not used to dealing with bleed now that it's so easy to add it um, to vellum. So that's, that's the uploading tip. Um, so vellum 3.0, it's going to come out in just a couple weeks. We're targeting November 29th for when it will be available. And now we talk about price. So if you own vellum press, then it's going to be a free update. But if you own Vellum eBooks license, it's also going to be a free update. So <laughs> it's a free update. If you don't own a license, you still need to purchase a license. We're not changing our prices um, uh, uh, or, or anything like that. This is a free update. We've worked really hard on it, uh, but we're also really excited to get this into everyone's hands. Um, so we think um, we've heard from a lot of beta users, and they seem to be really, really enjoying it. Um, so we're excited to see what people um, what people think about it. Uh, and now this is the Q and A, which I guess I left less time than I was expecting. Although we took some questions. So the first one was, you were wondering about font size. When I, uh, uh, when I go to print, then it's really tiny, and I have, I have no idea. You know, I, I need some metric to use so, every time. So I'm going to um, go back here to mirror my screen. So um, let's, so you should be able to evaluate what it looks like using the preview. Um, and uh, you know, typically the best way is to take a look at the preview or look at it, or as I opened the PDF in your Max Preview app, bring up the two up view and evaluate the size there. Uh, um, we also know some people, if they feel like they need a physical um, you know, something, print, print a page out to your laser printer to view it there. Uh, the reason we don't say, we don't um, have a, point sizes in our print settings is, uh, I will go fast, is for this reason. 
fonts aren't all the same size. And a 16-point font Garamond is not the same as a 16-point Fanwood. And so I think people, unfortunately, get in this mode of, I need to have a 16-point font. But those are actually radically different visual things. And so one of the things that we do is we normalize it all for you. But it's confusing if you were to change styles and see your font size change from 16 to 16 and a half to 17 to 17.25 or whatever it is. And so we think that a better metric is to evaluate it how it looks on the page. And so um, I'm happy to talk more about that in person, but that's why we don't offer like actual point sizes, but um, the recommended size is, is in the center, and then we have half point steps going up. Yes. All right, um, I was curious, I know that it's not in this version. Is there gonna be table support, chart support, or and, um, Maybe a footnote. I know there's endnotes. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, so I'm asking, I have some nonfiction coming up. Right. And I do over 100 books a year in vellum. So yeah. I get about three or four, and they're a nightmare for me every year. So I'm kind yeah. of wondering when I might have that. For, so, we do, so we don't, tip, like, um, as a small company, we don't, we don't um, try to commit because to like particular dates. For things we don't we don't want to be late we don't want to miss we're we we're pretty good about saying hey we're gonna we we're gonna release on November 29th. So, th thanks. So I don't want to sound like I'm like avoiding the question. Tables are something that we it goes through phases. Sometimes we get a lot of requests and sometimes it goes a long time without getting a request. It's something that we have in our database and it is something we're definitely considering for the future. But it's not a thing like that. Um, 3.0 and, and probably the next sort of big feature update after that will be more around style-based stuff. And then we're gonna take stock of what the next big things are and, um, and hopefully get to those kinds of things. Um, uh, but again, it's something that I can't sort of commit to. For tables, we typically say, if it's not a lot of information, we, um, a lot of our authors make an image of it and do that. It's not a great solution, um, but... Yes, that's, yeah, I know, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yes, um, that's a thing we're definitely considering. Will you, can we do a large print for visually impaired? Yes, so you can do large print. If you go to more options, we have large print here. Um, Vellum follows the sort of traditionally um, traditional publisher, typical of like Thorndike Press, that's in all the libraries. It um, it which which actually uses a non sans serif font. There's been some debate about which is easier to read, depending on who you talk to. Um, that's another thing we're planning on introducing in the future is the ability to have an accessible style that um, follows a different set of guidelines than, say, the Thorndike Press traditional publisher. So, so you follow like compliance with Center for Visually Impaired or whatever. Yeah. They the, you know, we already create EPUB and stuff that that follows um, ACE validation for accessibility. Um, we currently follow sort of like. We follow traditional publishers and like like Thorndike, et cetera, for large print. And then there's yes, then there's other sets of guidelines that we hope to follow for accessibility. Yes. I do anthologies. Yes. So uh, you can turn off the chapter number here by going to numbered. Now, here's here's a little thing that hopefully a lot of you know. Let's say you have a lot of chapters and you want to turn it all off. You can, um, you can, you can select one, hold down shift, select the other, then go to chapter, and it will affect all of them at once. So you can do the same thing with heading images. You can do the same thing. Most things in Vellum will operate on whatever you have selected in the navigator, so you should be all set. One other question, you, you mentioned that you could act export feature, is that going back into Word? Like if you, if you, so I take my manuscript in Word, I import it in and then I see some errors and change it, but I want my master Word document to remain. Mm -hmm. um, there is an export to RTF, which is, which 
you know, is not docx, but like any word, any like word can open it up. We are investing, you know, we are probably going to add an export to docx in the future. Um, it's, you know, uh, for most people, we heard a lot of our, our users, they're like, oh, I just keep the master in vellum and then I just generate. But for those of you who want to export it back to docx, you can do it that way for now. We need to wrap up. We need to wrap up, but it's my last slide, but I'll say I am, I'll, I can be around here for a few minutes after for people who want to chat. Um, also, I'm going to be at a table tomorrow at the event center during the author signing, even though I won't be signing anything, but you can still come by. So, thanks. I've had an issue with version two where when you're doing a full bleed image,